Tim Gannon, and welcome to the Parmalee Farm Sugar House. We're glad that you could come out today, and we'll give you a tour. Okay, um, I got involved with the Sugar House. Uh, I'm chairman of the Parmley Farm Committee, and uh, a lot of our projects have already been completed. We've been working on Parmley Farm for the last 10 years, and a lot of the projects have been completed. And one of my hobbies that I learned about five years ago was making maple syrup. And I went over to Wendy Welter's farm over on Rosemead Hill with uh, some guys over there from the Lions Club. And I learned, I watched the process and thought it was pretty neat. And uh, so uh, they trained me in that. And I went to some workshops. And then I joined the Maple Syrup Producers of Connecticut Association. And I went to their uh, workshops and learn more about how to make uh, good maple syrup. Uh, the syrup season runs from the late end of January to about the mid-March. So it's a kind of a short season where we'll tap the trees, collect the sap, and then make the syrup. Last year we produced, we uh, processed about 2,000 gallons of sap and we made 48 gallons of syrup. It takes about 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. So it's quite a bit. So we have to collect the sap from the trees, which we tap end of, April, uh, end of January, beginning of February. And every, again, everything is done by volunteers. And so we'll collect it from the trees right here on the property. There's a bunch of sugar maples. Sugar maple tree is the one that gives off the best amount of sugar content in the sap. Coming out of the tree can range anywhere from 2 to 3 percent, and we have to bring that up to 66.5 percent to make it maple syrup. So there's a lot of water that has to be taken out of that, and we'll go through that process in a minute. Okay, we're going to give you an idea of the process of uh, how we make maple syrup. We initially will tap the trees, the sugar maple trees, uh, with a tap or it's also called a spile. And we collect it in these 55 gallon, I'm sorry, these five gallon buckets. And then they're brought back to the sugar house. Uh, we collect it, we collect the sap with a tractor and a trailer with a big uh, tank on the back. And the volunteers will come along and empty the sap into the into the uh, tank. We'll bring the tank back here to the sugar house, and then we'll pump it into these 55-gallon drums. From there, it'll get pumped up in this pipe up into the inside where there's a storage tank inside, and we'll take you inside for that in just a minute. All right, now that we're inside the sugar house, we pump that sap up into this storage tank. The storage tank will hold 265 gallons of sap. It comes down, it's gravity fed down through this tubing. And when the tubing is connected to the evaporator, this is called the evaporator. The tubing is connected to the evaporator. And this is a float that controls the level of the sap into the evaporator. So it'll float down here. And then in the evaporator, this is called a raised flue evaporator. It has a series of flues in it, and the fire is underneath the flues. So it keeps that sap. You want to boil the sap to get rid of uh, the water. When it comes out of the tree again, it's about 2 to 3 percent sugar. And we have to evaporate the water to get it up to 66.5. Then we know that then it's become syrup. So the syrup will flow as it evaporates. It gets a little thicker. And it will flow down the, the uh, flues. It will come into the syrup pan. 
and there are three different chambers in the syrup pan and this is where it cooks for a little longer until it reaches 219 degrees which in Killingworth is usually about um, seven degrees above the boiling point of water. We also will use a hydrometer to test the density of the syrup. And what happens, we will dip some of the syrup uh, into this uh, tube and then this is the evaporator and when it reaches the line, the, the, the second red line, which is right here, that tells us that it's reached 66.5 at 219 degrees. So that's the, uh, uh, the density of the syrup. So once it comes out of there, oh, by the way, I should mention there are different types of uh, uh, fuel for evaporator. The one that we have and the most common is the wood-fired evaporator. And the wood is stored, and put the wood in there, the fire is there, it goes underneath the whole, the flames are underneath the whole thing and then exited out. This year we've installed this steam hood to help vent the steam out of the building. We do have an operating cupola up, up above that we can open up the windows and let the steam out. But because when the temperature is so cold in here, you get a lot of condensation. So the steam hood, hopefully, is going to take out much of the steam. Now, we, our wood supply is stored out here. We have that uh, all seasoned wood. Most of it's ash and oak that we had got here on the property from trees that had died or had fallen in a storm. So this is our wood storage area. And the person that feeds the fire has the warmest job in the place. So that would, so normally there'd be fire in there. There'd be a lot of steam rising here. Once we get to a point where we know that it's syrup, we'll draw it off here and we'll take this pail and come over to this filter. This is our filter and bottler over here. We'll pour the hot syrup in here. That has a felt filter in it. And there's a burner underneath that keeps this hot. When you're bottling the syrup, it should be bottled anywhere from 180 to 190 degrees. You want to make sure that it's nice and sterile and kills any bacteria. We use, this is our 12 ounce bottle. And what we'll do is when we're bottling, we'll have a group this tables will be lined up and we'll just pour it off here fill the bottle somebody puts the cap on nice and tight we lay it flat so that the hot syrup gets to the bottle cap and sterilizes the bottle cap at that temperature then we would take it over to the table and we would put our labels on we would also do the grading of the syrup so we know if it's what grade, there's four different grades of syrup. The ones that we produced most often last year was the amber color. It's all grade A, amber color with the uh, rich taste. And then there's also the dark amber, which has a robust taste. So those are the different syrups that we produce here. Um, after it's been bottled, we, we sell the uh, 12 ounce bottles for $15 and the 10 ounce bottles are $10. Or the eight, they're eight ounce are $10. So that's, that's that process of how we make our syrup. Well, I just wanted to let you folks know about the idea of doing the sugar house here at Parmley Farm. Uh, a couple of us got together and decided we'd like to build a sugar house to make maple syrup here at the farm. And we figured we have to raise the money and not ask the town for that. So we decided how we would do that is to make up some sugar maple leaves of different colors. And then people could put their name or whatever else they want on it. And we would sell them for $25 a piece. And that would help us raise the money 
to build the sugar house. So it, everything went very well. So he ended up making four batches of 120 leaves. And so they sold so fast. And we went out to the community and said, help us build the sugar house. So people bought leaves. Some people put their whole family name on it. Other people just put uh, some letters. So we raised the money to build the uh, sugar house by selling the leaves as well as donations. So we created this visual aid for the library. It was kind enough by the library, the Killingworth Library, they were willing to sell the leaves there as well as at town hall at the town clerk's office, as well as individuals going out and selling them. So as you can see down below, uh, we figured that the building itself, if we built it by volunteers, would cost us about $5,000. So we raised the money for that. And then we decided, well, we were, we were lucky enough to get the uh, money. And so we, were gonna, we have to buy equipment to put in the sugar house to make the maple syrup. So we continued to sell the leaves. And we ended up raising about $18,000 from selling the leaves, as well as donations from various people. Mm -hmm.